Hey guys, so a few days ago, the team from the Budgie Desktop released a uh, post on their website which uh, laid out some interesting plans for Budgie 11. Now, I don't follow this news religiously, so it came as a bit of an interesting surprise that it looks like they're moving away from the GTK toolkit. So the, I will link, of course, to the post down in the description below. Um, but uh, it's, it's a pretty long post. It's written really well, actually. It's written in a way that's, that explains their decision in a really straightforward uh, way, which is very easy to, to, to uh, empathise with. And, you know, I sort of respect their, their best decision to go ahead with this. But it did make me question, uh, make me, make, it did sort of raise some interesting questions about how we saw um, GTK and QT as toolkits as well, especially in this day and age, because there was a time when I started using Linux that you would really only ever use GTK applications or QT applications with, you know, and, and there would be exceptions, for example, if there was a particularly um, important piece of software that you needed to use and it only came in a QT or GTK. Uh, GTK toolkit, then you would like make exceptions. But generally, there seemed to, to be a, like a running theme of GTK or QT apps, depending on whether or not you were using GNOME or KDE or XFCE or, uh, or what have you. Um, but this post here uh, sort of explains the broad strokes of the procedure of decoupling um, Budgie from GNOME and moving towards QT. They explain, uh, you know, why they're not forking GTK slash GNOME. Obviously, that would just be a huge amount of work. I wouldn't, you know, expect them for it. They talk a little bit about C versus C++, which is uh, quite interesting. And they make it very clear, this isn't a strikeout at GNOME. This is, you know, GNOME and GTK. GTK seems to be being built as a platform um, around the GNOME desktop, or at least with, with that in mind. And Budgie being another GTK, based desktop uh, kind of feel like like it's not working in their direction anymore which is completely their prerogative to go ahead and um, and move they as you can see here they look at um, the their other option which was EFL slash enlightenment I do not know a thing about this toolkit it strikes me as being rather lightweight but also a lot of work to actually get it up to the visual level that they want for the for the budgie desktop something very easy to understand I guess I would love to have seen the budgie desktop go super lightweight though a really nice looking straightforward uh, desktop that runs on just about any uh, machine Oh man, that would have been poetry in motion. But uh, I, I, it would have, it would have been a lot of work. It would have been a lot of work. QT makes is is the sensible choice, it seems, from their reasoning here. And obviously, I've only like read their viewpoint from it, but but it makes all the sense in the world. They lay lay out some things that will not be happening as a result of this um, adoption of QT. They'll not be using QML. The desktop core should not be using JS only. C++. Um, again, that's I'm, I, you know, I'll defer to their judgment on this one. Um, I've written stuff in JS before, J JavaScript, but I nothing for the desktop, so I don't know, uh, you know, what you know, the ramifications of that. Uh, it will not apply to third-party widget authors. Um, okay, that's fine. Um, it will not be using KDE libraries. Budgie has a specific focus and plan. Now, this one, this one is interesting because I'd like to know, like, I, you know, th this makes it even more interesting to see how it pans out. So. Um, I don't know whether or not this is a technical thing, whether or not there's like, you know, whether or not it's, it's you know, there's, there's a difference between like QT libraries and KDE or anything like that. Like my knowledge of that depth of, of an operating system is, is, is pretty rudimentary if I'm completely honest here. So I don't necessarily entirely understand what this would mean. As I understand it, over the past few years, there has been a really big movement within KDE and Plasma development to make it so that the QT toolkit can work with any application on any, you know, on, on, on other systems and to be quite modular and to require the minimum amount of, of uh, libraries to be downloaded and installed and for the most part they've been really quite successful and we've seen applications like VLC Media Player which is a Qt based application included um almost as as you know as as a as a matter of um you know as a matter of the norm uh, included in many GTK um based desktop environment um deployments so um, so it, it it's the th the thing that really made me um, this post actually made me question is our attitude towards GTK and QT apps. Um, definitely worth reading the whole thing though. So back when I started using Linux, there seemed to be this somewhat unwritten rule that you would generally prefer either GTK based applications or QT based applications, and that decision would generally be. 
um, sort of dictated as a result of your choice of desktop environment. So if you'd use KDE, then you'd be using more Qt-based applications. And if you're using something like GNOME or, or XFCE, then you would be using GTK-based applications, which um, you know made a significant amount of sense, sense for the time. However, now that computers have gotten faster and that these toolkits have, have become more developed, it seems easier and easier and easier to mix and match Qt and GTK applications, especially considering that um, distribution uh, now often regularly make sure that Qt and GTK apps look the same and consistent across uh, their dest uh, their um, operating systems, it seems like um, mixing and matching Qt with GTK not only could be an option of for, for what we do, but it could actually just become a, a matter of course. You know, it, 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 could, it could just be well, you know, GTK, Qt. It doesn't matter what applications it's running aside or what libraries it needs to pull down, um, because uh, you know the the diff because it's all almost designed to be like that, and that seems to be the, the way that we're moving. Um, and it's good to have choice, and it's good to be able to to switch out that choice um, as easy as possible. So. Again, I don't really know what this entirely means for the software development side of things, but I do find it kind of interesting now how that uh, how how over the last few years our attitude towards the GTK and Qt toolkits has has evolved to be a lot more um, a lot more open about e you know either one. And we see Linux Mint. I reviewed Linux Mint earlier today, and it it uh, it, it does include in some of its distributions the VLC media player, even though every other application it has. Um, is um is GTK, but yeah, of course, VLC Media Player is Qt based. So um so that's about it from from there today. I just wanted to share a few thoughts on that. Really quite interesting uh, post, and just to share your thoughts on 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 Qt and GTK applications. How much do you mix and match? Do you not have a care in the world, or do you try and keep your system more you know sort of in, in sort of in in keeping with either a GTK or a Qt type of of cool uh, tool kit? See, I, I use Inkscape. I love Inkscape. It's a great graphical tool, but I also like the XFCE desktop environment. So I install um, Inkscape, and it doesn't seem to have an astronomical amount of um, of, of libraries that, that come with it. And I've never had a problem running Inks, Inks, Inkscape on a GTK-based environment. So it, it it does seem like this is a mindset that uh, that um, that we've moved past. But it, uh, but 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 I guess something that I still uh, is still a lens that I still view. Um, the software world through which might be a bit out of date i don't know let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below that's about it from me today until next time i've been chris ware and you've been awesome take care now